Well, I'm very pleased to say I'm joined by John McDonald now, who has a long history in greyhound racing that probably many of you don't know about. But uh, John, you'll have been seen on TV by many people watching this before. But for those who haven't seen you, just tell us a bit about what you do. I became a sports announcer and I worked predictably on or, or, or prominently on the boxing um, and the snooker. And I worked for Matchroom Sport for some time. And then in 2005, I started working on the darts and it kind of took over my life like it's taken over the world of sport. And, um, and I've been on that full time now since then. And uh, I've really had no time to do other things. So the boxing and the snooker and all the other events I've done in the past um, have all been put on the back boiler while I concentrate on the Professional Darts Corporation's live TV event. So that's where I've been. Um, and and it, an interesting turn for me, not really knowing anything about darts when I first started, to uh, really appreciate the, the full value of it. Amazing. And you and I actually met at uh, Fishermania when you were announcing yeah. there and kind of bonded over our uh, mutual love of greyhounds. And your history in greyhound racing goes back to your childhood, doesn't it? It does indeed, yeah. My dad was into greyhound racing and we had a couple at home in the days when you could take your own dog to a track, the old flapping tracks. And I'm sure some of the listeners will uh, and the viewers will, will, will remember that quite well. I mean, there was so many tracks in the home counties them days in and around London that you could pretty much go out three or four times a week. And when I was old enough, um, I would go in along with my dad and his friends, um, a little group of Irish men, and they would have a van and they'd put two or three dogs in and I'd be in the back trying to keep them apart and hold on to them as we went round corners and made our way to different flapping tracks. And sometimes we'd win and sometimes we'd lose, but they were quite crafty and we did very well, but we had them at home as well. So we had a couple at home. And I remember one in particular that um, my, my dad always said, you know, keep them on the leash, even in the garden when you're taking them from the, from the kennel. And I, I just remember going, open the door one day and saying, come on. And one went this way and one jumped the fence at the back of our house. I was like, what are you doing? So I spent the next hour running around South London, trying to find this greyhound and petrified. And I found it in the end, just laying down in an alleyway, worn out where it just ran the whole block. It was, oh, I thought I was going to get murdered. That's brilliant. Yeah. And you, you had responsibility for helping train them as well as a child. You used to, you were yeah, responsible we for the walking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my, my, it's, it's funny because um, it wasn't until, you don't take anything in when you're a kid. You just, you know, you want to go and play football. You want to hang about with your mates. But, you know, you're getting a few quid. You're getting a couple of bob from different people to help out on the night and stuff like that. So the training side of things, my dad really, when I think back, it was quite, we had to wait too early evening when there was no one around. And then we'd go to a park. We'd make sure all the gates were shut. And then you'd do a couple of just sort of sprints and stuff like that. And it's very difficult to train with very little equipment. So, you know, we just did a, a, a just sort of really along the, the straight. We got them going on the straight. And because my dad would always say, oh, oh, wait, that's where the race is won on the straight, you know. And, and I'd like, well, so I don't know, dad, I think, you know, we should try and get them to turn a bit more. But it's difficult if you haven't got fences and, and gates and stuff to hold them in. But, yeah, we got involved in that. And that was different. You know, that was um, it was an interesting time. I mean, you know, you're looking back in the 60s when there was so much greyhound racing then. You know, as I say, you could have gone every night of the week. There's a lot of greyhound racing now, I think. It's still a very, very busy mm. schedule. Is it, is it something you've got to buzz from even as a child? Yeah, I, I kind of... To be honest with you, in the end, it became a pain because it, I wanted to do other things. And, you know, you get so far into it. And then I was making excuses not to go uh, because it wasn't really seen as being quite a good thing to do, really, uh, as a kid. You know, everyone was going to youth clubs and, and I was a member of a boxing club, a football team. And then I had all that, that work to do as well. Plus, I'd help my dad at weekends with his job. And so, you know... it it seemed that I didn't have a childhood. You know, it seemed that everybody was having fun going off camping with a school. And I was like, I can't do that. You know, we're going up to Birmingham and we're going to, you know, and so in the end, it got a bit of a pain. And then my dad lost interest. Um, I think when his good friend passed away, who he used to work with, with the dogs, I think that was it. I think he said, well, do you know what? I think that will do. He didn't want to do it on his own. Um, 
and so he we never had a dog at home then and it was quite peaceful it was quite a nice time to be at home and I joined the military quite young I went in well, just over 15 years old when I went in because I'm an all August baby so I was the youngest kid in my class and that year you could leave school at 16 so I got myself away and, um, and my dad never ever got another dog um, he used to have a bet on dogs you know he'd always have his bet every day he'd go down and do something and he'd follow form and he'd always go to the derby at Wimbledon he liked to go to Wimbledon he'd probably go twice a month and more just to see faces there you know friends um, that was our local track so he was always there um, and then it wasn't until my children saw some photographs of him with a greyhound and they were like, what happened? And I explained it. And I explained about going to Wimbledon, the fun we used to have. And, you know, and it, they said, well, let's go. So we all went. And that was the start of it again. You know, so like probably 20 years ago, I started it all again. Um, we got into a couple of syndicates and then we bought a dog for the family and friends and we started to go and then you're back in it before you know where you are.